Welcome to Basic Python Syntax. Today, you'll learn about line structure, multi-line statements, comments and doc strings, indentation, quotation marks, identifiers, variables, and string formatters. Each program in Python is made of logical lines. So you have a notebook with 20 lines on each page. Now think of a program in a similar way. But here, every logical line ends with a new line token. This is a simple print statement that prints, Hi, how are you? But this gives us a syntax error. It says it reached the end of line while scanning the string literal. This means every statement goes on one single line. You cannot break it over two lines. Actually, you can. We'll discuss this in the next slide. The interpreter also ignores blank lines. This code right here has three lines of code, the second of which is a blank line. But this works perfectly and the interpreter gives us the output which is 2 greater than 1. Since 2 is greater than 1, it prints 2 greater than 1. On to multi-line statements. Like I said, you can split a statement over multiple lines. One reason why you would do this is to help with readability. If you have a very long statement, you can split it over multiple lines. To do this, you can either use a backslash or a triple quote. You can put a backslash after high in this print statement. If you want to declare a variable a with the value 10 and then print it, you can use backslashes. Here, we don't put a backslash after 10 because print a is another statement. It is not part of the statement a is equal to 10. You can use triple quotes around the string. Now take a look at this code. When we try to print the value of b, it gives us a name error. This is because using triple quotes here, we declared a string instead. Finally, we can also put multiple statements in one line with a semicolon. If you have experience with a language like C++ or Java, you're familiar with the semicolon. We use it to indicate the end of a statement. In Python, however, it isn't mandatory. But we can use it for situations like this when we need to put multiple statements in one line. Say you found a job as a Python developer in a prestigious organization. But you won't always be on one project. Other developers may be assigned to it later. Your code needs to be understandable. The other developer should not have to spend half an hour simply trying to understand your code. Comments come in handy here. They help explain code and the interpreter simply ignores them. In Python, we declare comments with the octothorpe, which is the hash symbol on your keyboard. This is a comment. It is not executed. Unlike C++ and Java, Python has no support for multi-line comments. If you must use them though, you'll need to use a hash at the beginning of each line of your comment. Like you can see on your screen right now, these are two lines of comments. While comments help explain code, documentation strings do it more specifically. What sets the two apart is that doc strings are retained at runtime. The programmer can refer to these with the doc attribute and inspect them. To define a doc string, we use triple quotes. We put it as the first line in a function. Here, we define a function func that prints hi and define a doc string that tells us that this function prints out a greeting. And then we make a call to this function. This prints out hi. Like we saw, we can access this function's doc string with the doc attribute. Notice that the output contains characters like slash n and slash t. These are escape characters for new line and tab respectively. 
Don't worry if all of this seems really new to you. Over the course of the entire set of tutorials, you will learn about every little thing in detail. Unlike C++ or Java, Python does not make use of curly braces to delimit code blocks. This means you cannot get away with avoiding proper indentation practices. Indentation is how you pad the start of a statement with spaces, tabs, or a combination of both. Indentation is mandatory in Python. In the following piece of code, we indent lines 2 and 3. This means they are under the if statement. If the condition is true, they execute. Pay attention to the fact that we have indented both of these lines to the same amount of write space. This can be spaces or tabs. If we don't follow this and we indent them by unequal amounts, it is a syntax error. When dealing with strings, you can either surround them with single quotes or double but not both. You cannot begin a string with a single quote and then end it with double. This is okay. This is not. When you need single quotes to be part of your string, you can delimit the entire string with double quotes instead. And vice versa. Let's move on to identifiers. Although you can use the Python interpreter or the IDLE as a handy calculator, larger programs require you to deal with data longer. For this purpose, we declare variables so we can manipulate data whenever we want. Identifiers are the names that we give to such entities as variables, functions, classes, modules, and so. But there are certain rules to follow when naming an identifier. The first character can only be one of these, a capital A to Z, small a to Z, or an underscore. The rest can be letters, digits, and or underscores, or the identifier may just even be one character long. Identifiers are case sensitive, so a variable name is not the same as the variable name with a capital N. You cannot use any reserved keyword as an identifier. These are what Python allots special meaning to, like if and print. Python has 35 reserved keywords. These are and, as, assert, break, class, and so on. We'll discuss all of these as we proceed through the course. There are some conventions or best practices that you should follow while naming identifiers. You should use uppercase initials for class names and lowercase for everything else. Private identifiers should be named with a leading underscore as an underscore username. A leading underscore is an underscore before something, while a trailing underscore is one after it. You should name a strongly private identifier with two leading underscores as an underscore underscore password. Python holds some special identifiers which both begin and end with two underscores. We'll discuss these in a separate lecture. Variables, like I said earlier, are a way to attach a name to an object or a value so we can refer to it later. Since Python is dynamically typed, we don't need to declare the type of every variable we declare. This is assumed at runtime. Let's take a variable x, set it to 10, and print its value. At runtime, this assigns int to x. Now, if we store a string in this variable x, x is now a variable of the string type. The print function lets us print simple strings and values, but what if we want to do more than just that? Using formatters, we can embed values into strings. First, we'll discuss the percent operator. Let's set x to 10 and printer to hp. Now, take a look at this print statement. 
here the values of x and printer are fed to the print statement and then these are passed to the places where you can observe the person s in the statement. This print, I just printed 10 pages to the printer hp. We can also do this with the format method. These values reach the print statement through the format method then are fed to their respective places in the string via the curly braces. X gets to position 0 and printer gets to position 1. You can also initialize these values in the format method itself. Yet another way to do this is f-strings. The value of x gets to the container with x in curly braces and similarly for printer. Well that's all for today. Don't forget to check your LMS for your assignments so you can learn better. Good luck!